Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Frinton Gospel Chapel online service on this Father's Day 2021. And I know for many, it's a day of great celebration and it will be a really fun time. But for some, it might be a little bit difficult this year. So I'd like to just read the first verse of a song that we used to sing many years ago as a prayer as we start our service. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the things that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go, for I know I always can trust you. And may that be our prayer today as we go into our service. Let's worship together.
with my soul it is well it is well with my soul though Satan should bow that though trial With my soul Yes, it is well It is well With my soul My sin of the bliss Of this glorious soul With my soul Yes, it is well It is well With my soul Oh, it is well With my soul Hi guys, in 2 Corinthians 6.18 it states And I will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord. Let's pray. Abba Father, thank you for, our, for being our Heavenly Father from whom all things come and for whom we live. Thank you Lord that you guide us in the way of wisdom and upright paths that when we walk our steps will not be hampered and when we run we will not stumble. Thank you that every good and perfect gift is from you, Abba Father, from above coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Abba Father, on this Father's Day, we pray that you bless all the dads out there with your love, wisdom and discernment, so that they can provide, guide and love their families, especially during these difficult times, Lord. Help them to become the fathers that you created them to be, and remind them that whenever they fail, Lord, as we all do inevitably sometimes, that you, Lord, are our strength and portion, and their strength and portion forever. Thank you, ever, Father, you are such a good, good Father, and to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Uh, great to have this opportunity to share in communion together. And uh, today I'm going to use uh, just a section of a, a Celtic-style communion service from a Celtic 
prayer book. Um, I hope you find it helpful. Uh, so I'm going to just begin with a, a prayer that reminds us of what God has done um, throughout the ages, its creation really, and uh, culminating in the sacrifice that Jesus made for us all on the cross. So the prayer begins, Blessed are you, God, faithful and strong. All your works, the height and the depth, echo the silent music of your praise. In the beginning, your word summoned light. Night withdrew and creation dawned. Then, as if ages had passed unseen, waters gathered on the face of the earth and life appeared. When at last the days had ripened and the earth was grown in full abundance, you created in your image man and woman, the stewards of all creation. You gave us breath and speech that all the living might find a voice to sing your praise and to celebrate the creation you made and called good. Holy God, how wonderful is the work of your hands. Because sin rose up to leave a fault line, even in the earth, you step forward to enter into a covenant of peace that can renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully welcomes his own, you embrace the people as yours, filling them with a longing for peace that will last, a justice that will never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. And from them you raised up Jesus, your son, the living bread in whom ancient hungers are satisfied. He healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners, though death would hunt him down. But with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms and surrendered his spirit. Father God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these earthly gifts of bread and wine that we may have communion in the body and blood of Christ and that in him we may become one. So remember on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and after giving thanks as we have done in his name, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat this, my body broken for you. Eat it remembering that I have given my whole self for you. Let's receive the bread. And then after supper, he took the cup and lifting it before them, he said, this cup is the sign of a new blood covenant. My blood is shed for each of you. Drink of this cup, remembering my love for you. So let's receive the wine. So God, we thank you for walking together with us through the spilt blood and broken body of your son, Jesus. In the peace this brokenness has brought us, we are made whole. So may we live as your holy people, outstretching the edges of your peaceable kingdom. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Acts chapter 10, and I'm going to read the first 23 verses. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God 
who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? he asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who is one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter came up on the roof to pray. To pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheep being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to have you come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. And Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. We're going to look at... Uh, Acts chapter 10 this morning, and uh, uh, I've read the first 23 verses, but in actual fact, there's a lot more uh, to the chapter, and it's uh, a record and a complete event of something that happened to two, two people, um, and also to a household of people. And chapter 10 of the book of Acts is considered by many to be one of the most important events recorded in the whole of the Bible. Now, this is because it clearly shows how God's purpose and plan is revealed that no matter who they are, where they were born or what race they are, he has the power and the desire to cleanse a man's heart. And that is through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning, I want you to hold in your mind uh, verse 43 of this chapter. And it says this. All the prophets testify about him, that's Jesus, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So hold that verse in your mind as we look at chapter 10 of the book of Acts. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And that is, of course, the, the most important message that, uh, that comes through this chapter. And not only this chapter, but it follows through uh, because of its importance into chapter 11. And really, it, it's uh, amplifying 
or it's also explaining John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And it also emphasises the last uh, chapter in the book of Matthew, when Jesus said to his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples in all nations. And you see, as we go through this chapter and we see what Peter has to say, we realise that even at that point, even with those things that are written, he didn't understand until this event exactly what it meant to go into all the world and to preach the gospel and make disciples. So that's why it's considered one of the most important events that's recorded by Luke in the book of Acts. Now, the book of Acts is a very important book because it ties together the gospels and the letters that follow that are written to the churches, particularly by Paul, and others of the apostles. And without the book of Acts, we wouldn't have the understanding of the establishment of the church and God's family uh, and how we live and how we should behave. We can read those things in some respect within the letters, but we wouldn't understand the background or how they happened or what the church really looked like. So, what happens here is Cornelius, who is a Roman centurion and probably a very important Roman centurion because he is part of a cohort, he's part of a regiment, the Italian regiment, which was made up of a group of centurions and groups of 100 soldiers. But we're told something about him and his character and the way he behaves. And then we have Peter, the next section looks at Peter. And Peter had been uh, outside of Joppa and he travelled to Joppa and he'd been healing and he'd been preaching. Um, and he was at the house of Simon the Tanner and he was waiting for a meal. He, he needed some food. And so he decided before the meal uh, he would go up onto the roof where it would have been quiet. Uh, maybe it had been cool. Maybe it wouldn't have been cool. We don't know. Um, and, he, and he became hungry and he went into a trance and he had a vision and he had a clear vision. And when he was given, given the vision, at first he didn't understand it, but it was made clear to him later on as the events uh, unfold. Then we go through to the next section and what's happened is that the uh, the men sent by uh, Cornelius to, to Peter um, had taken him back to Cornelius's house in Caesarea. And Caesarea uh, and, and uh, Cornelius had fallen down at the feet of Peter uh, as he entered his house. And he said, stand up. He said, I'm just a man. I am nothing more than a man. And throughout the Gospels, throughout the Book of Acts, and throughout uh, the letters that are written to the churches, at all times, all of the people involved always point back to God. They take any anything of that's given as credit to them, that credit, they remove that and they return it to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. And as Peter had entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up, stand up. He said, I am only a man myself. And then uh, Peter has a conversation and says, well, why have you asked me? What's it about? Why have you come? Why have you asked me to come? And talking with him, Peter went inside, found a large gathering of people. And Cornelius had actually gathered all his uh, family together and his servants and, and his people around him. Um, and, uh, and then Peter says, but um, there's, there's something that, that's not quite right here. He says, you see, um, 
You're well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or visit him. But this is the point, and this is where he understands now the vision that God has given him, because he says, but God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objections. May I ask why you sent me? Then Corlinius answered, Four days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour. At three in the afternoon, suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the house of Simon the Tanner, who lived by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good for you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything that the Lord has commanded you to tell me. And then Peter preaches to the household and he tells them of the Lord Jesus Christ. He tells them of his birth. He tells them of his life. He tells them of his trial. He tells them of his crucifixion. He tells them of his resurrection. And he clearly shows to uh, Cornelius' household just what God's plan is for people, for any person. And we come back to that verse, uh, verse 43. All the prophets testify about him, that's Jesus, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And that was the message. And the reason that we're looking at this is because it shows that that message is for you and it's for me. It shows that it's a message for the whole world. It shows that God's plan was that his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, should live amongst us as one of us. But also he is the son of God and he is revealed and he's revealed to us now through the Holy Spirit. So if you have the opportunity, go and read chapter 10 and chapter 11 of uh, of this book of, of Acts and to just put into your mind, to cement in your mind these events and the significance of them. So what I want to do is briefly look at three things, how God showed his plan was for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the first thing that we note is this, he chose men of prayer. It showed men of prayer. What was Cornelius doing? He was at the third hour of the day, uh, three in the afternoon, and he had a vision. He was at prayer. And then we read a bit further on that Peter went up onto the roof to pray because he was hungry. And while he was there, with the meal was being prepared. And then God spoke to him in a trance, and he gave him that vision. He was at prayer. So one of the fundamentals and one of the key things that we remember and that we do is that we spend time in prayer. We spend time in prayer as individuals. We spend time in prayer as a church fellowship. We spend time in prayer when we meet together uh, on our Sunday services. We meet on Thursday evenings in prayer, and we have a prayer walk on Friday mornings at 11 o'clock on the Greensward in Frinton. All opportunities to meet together and to pray. We spend time as individuals in prayer as well. God chooses men of prayer. It shows that they bring their requests to him. It shows that they are devout. It shows that they have that desire to, to be in the presence of God. And that's one way that we do it, in prayer. So he chose men of prayer. If we are to be of any value to God, if we are to be of service to him, then we have to spend time in prayer as individuals and we have to spend time in prayer together. It's a sad thing uh, that in, all, in most churches around our land, the most poorly attended meeting is the prayer meeting. 
And I've heard all kinds of things said about prayer meetings. It's not lively enough. Um, we we don't um, we don't have singing. Uh, and when you look at it, the biggest problem is that we centre the things back on ourselves. We don't look at why we're really there. We don't look at what we're doing in the presence of God in prayer. We think that we should get something out of it. And if we don't get something out of it, then we don't see any need. Well, we do get something out of it, but not what we're looking for. We, we actually get, what we get out of it is that God speaks to us. He speaks to us very often in the quiet. He speaks to us sometimes in the silences. Why in the silences? Because we're so busy talking and doing things that we're not listening. And when we have the silence, he has the opportunity to speak to us. One of the, one of the hardest things for Christians is prayer. Some Christians do have the gift of prayer. But the majority of us, we struggle. We struggle very hard. And it's a discipline. And it's something that we have to come back to time and time again. And we have to come back and say to the Lord Jesus Christ, I've got it wrong again. Please forgive me and I will start again. What is your prayer life like? Is it such that God will choose you to serve him in a particular and special way? Because that's what he desires for all of us. He has tasks for all of us. He has plans for us. He knew us before we were born. He knew that we were going to accept him and follow in his ways. And he has that desire that all people, that all the people that he has created come to him. And we come to him and in one particular way is in prayer. So he chose men of prayer. The second thing is for this to be uh, the, the to, to show God's plan and to show what he intended, he had to choose two different people. He chose a Jew, Peter, and he chose a Gentile, a Roman centurion. Two very different people from very different walks of life. One uh, who was a fisherman uh, and had become a disciple and an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was now a missionary. He was now uh, preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he chose two different people to bring about his purposes in his plan. And he spoke to them as individuals, completely separate, miles apart at first. And each of them listened and each of them obeyed and each of them understood as things unfolded in the events that happened. So when he chose two different people, he was showing this concern for his creation, for his world, and for the people that he set in it, and for his desire that we should be at one with him. And you see, in particular, when he spoke to Peter, he said, don't exclude anybody. God said, don't exclude anybody that I have made clean. And of course, Peter understood that people were made clean. People had their sins forgiven through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was the message that he preached. So when he got to Cornelius' house and Cornelius had gathered all his family together, Jesus, uh, uh, Peter preached the Lord Jesus Christ and he explained exactly what it was about. So we come back to that verse. All the prophets, all those people in the Old Testament, everything that had been written of God's plan and his people was being revealed now through the Lord Jesus Christ. And they testify to him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Have you heard the message? You've heard it now. Maybe for the first time, maybe for the umpteenth. Have you, have you actually entered into that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you accepted him and said, 
I believe and I put my full confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he has lifted me out of the pit, that he has lifted me out of the mire, that he has covered my sins with his blood, that he has given me forgiveness and that he has made me clean and that he's made me whole. And, you know, the thing is that as we live our lives, we need to come back to him daily in prayer. And he forgives us daily because of the things that we do daily. Why? Because we're still living in this world, because we are still tempted by this world, because the devil still has his sway in so many things. But as we spend our time in the presence of God, then he fills our lives uh, with, the, with the fruit that he has for us. And he gives us gifts that glorify him and show the power in his name. So the third, third thing is this, that he reveals himself in particular ways, uh, but he reveals himself in a stunning way. So if we read on from verse 43, verse 44 of chapter 10, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all those who heard the message. Now the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, even on you, even on me. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. You see, when God works in our lives through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, because we believe in him, then he gives us that gift of the Holy Spirit. And it's revealed in many ways. Um, to each one of us, and I can, and I've told you before exactly how God revealed Himself to me, how the Lord Jesus Christ revealed Himself to me in the power of the Holy Spirit, because He gave me a gift that I could never have had without that power. And you see, these uh, these early early Christians that that came with Peter were uh, were, were Jewish Christians, and they still thought that this message of the gospel was just for the Jews. It was just for those people. But this whole event that's recorded is the clear understanding that it's for everybody because those things that had happened to the early Jewish Christians and the early church happened also to the Gentile believers, to Romans uh, and to anybody else that heard this message. And down through the ages, that message has been preached around the world and people have come into that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and they've been saved. And those things that happened, the outpouring of the, the Spirit, the revelation and the speaking of tongues happened to those people in that house, to Cornelius' household. And what did Peter say? He said, we've seen it. We have borne witness to it that these people are now saved. They have come into that relationship because the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon them. They have received gifts just the same as every as the Jewish Christians and so they can be baptised and they should be baptised and they were baptised with water to show that they were new people, they were new creations. God had made them anew. So that's why, and this is really a connecting bit uh, in the book of Acts between Peter and and, and later on, uh, Paul, uh, and as we read on from chap chapter uh, chapter twelve onwards, uh, we we see how uh, how significant Paul's message, that, that the way that Paul takes the message to the churches, uh, to to the people of the other other nations and churches are established in those towns and cities that he visits along with the other apostles. So that's why it's an important, that's why it's considered such an important part uh, of, of, uh, of the message and of the book of Acts and one of the events in, uh, in the Bible. So I come back to verse 43. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. Beginning 
That's the end of our church service for this week. We pray that uh, you enjoyed the service and that you'll watch again. Um, let's finish with a prayer. Father, we ask that you'll bless us this week, that you'll help us to have a good week. And we just thank you, Father, for this day and thank you for this special day, Father's Day. Amen. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.